This week, tens of thousands of people in Argentina took to the streets to protest against President Javier Millet's plans to impose sweeping austerity measures. The demonstrations took place just seven weeks after Millet took office, having promised to impose reforms which he describes as a shock therapy for the country's inflation-riddled economy. To talk more about this, I'm joined now by Alicia Garcia Herrero. She's chief economist for Asia Pacific at Investment Bank Natixis and an expert in Latin American economies. Alicia, Malay swept to election victory only a few weeks ago, but he certainly doesn't seem very popular when you look at the turnout at these protests. Has he surprised people with the speed at which he's pursuing these reforms? Well, unfortunately, Millet has no time, really. It, this, the longer it takes for him to introduce shock therapy measures, the higher inflation will be. So he's running against the clock, literally. And I think, of course, there have been protests. But the key here is that he basically gets the money from the IMF. He has to get 4.5 billion US dollar first withdrawal out of 44,000 billion US dollar that were basically uh, put off uh, because of the previous government not complying with the requirements uh, from the IMF. So he's betting on that. Uh, the staff has approved his program. So it's really only about the board of the IMF this agreeing to these boards. The minute that money is disbursed, he will still have to stick to this very, very tight fiscal measures. But I think inflation will go down. And that means that uh, households in Argentina will regain a little bit of purchasing power. So really, he needs to push to run against the clock to get inflation down. That is key for Millet's economic program at the moment. What time frame are we talking about? How long do you think it will take to get inflation under control? Um, I think it can be quite quick if expectations believe in the program. It's actually starting to work. Believe it or not, notwithstanding this, this general strike, Argentina, Argentina's central bank, which, by the way, Millet has not closed down yet, and I don't think he will, because it's being very useful, is purchasing dollars. What I'm trying to say here is that there is capital inflows into the country. People are betting on a stronger peso after a 50% devaluation. In other words, somebody up there in the market outside of Argentina believes in his program. If that happens, the stabilization could be quite quick. He does seem really determined to take on the trade unions, though, doesn't he? Will that backfire? Uh, well, trade unions have historically been enormously important in Argentina. Well, I mean, this is why we have had Peronist governments for so long. And it is, of course, very difficult. But I have to say, if you actually look at the statistics beyond the fact that any general strike is obviously very impressive, there is still a lot of people who have not joined the strike. Why? Because everybody knows something has to be done. And it is hard to know for Argentinians whether this is the way out. But they also know that the previous way out wasn't working, which was basically flooding uh, the country with liquidity, with a, an ever depreciating currency, and of course, huge inflation. So in that regard, I think some people are still hoping that this program will work within Argentina, not only for investors. Yeah, that's very true. And Alicia, I think a lot of the protesters themselves say they're not necessarily against Millet, but they, they just don't like these changes. Let's take a listen to what some of them had to say. We don't support the government's austerity measures. This doesn't mean that we want President Millet to leave. No, not at all. We love democracy. The only thing we don't want is that the law that was sent to Congress is against the workers. We are defending people's work because without work there's nothing, there's no social peace. You cannot live if people do not have a decent income. Today we're here to keep the trains running. In the 1990s we already had many cuts and back then many railway workers were laid off. We don't want that again. 
some very worried workers there. And it's worth saying that Melee has already made a whole raft of changes, including devaluing the peso and eliminating several government ministries. But what sparked these demonstrations is the so-called Omnibus Bill. It includes plans to privatise 41 public companies, as well as to impose a 15% tax on most exports. The measures would also allow the government to ban certain kinds of protests, in particular those that would cripple public services like transport. Finally, and especially controversially, it would allow Millet to rule by decree for two years. Alicia, Congress is going to vote on this omnibus bill next week. As an economist, would you vote for or against it? I'm afraid that once you are uh, embarked in what is going to be an IMF program. I'm sure this is one of the criteria, you know, like, like you just have to go for it. I think what is very important though, if you read to the IMF uh, statement after uh, the, the, the staff visit, is that there's targeted measures for, for the, the most affected population, the poorest part of the population. I think it's very, very important that they target that part and they, they basically make sure that they're protected. So this is the only way out. I don't think we can now backtrack and say, hey, sorry, you know, we go back to where we were because then inflation will be triple or or fourfold because the investors won't believe Millet anymore. So in a way, he, he has only one way out, which is forward. That's what it is. Yeah, and he certainly does seem on phase. Let's take a listen to how he is presenting the case for radical change. A basis. Like I said many times, due to the irresponsibility of previous governments, the next year will be hard for all of us. But the other certainty I have is that if our program is obstructed by the same people as always, who don't want anything to change, we won't have the instruments to avoid this crisis becoming a social catastrophe of biblical proportions. To avoid this future to which they lead us depends on all. A social catastrophe of biblical proportions. Is this a fair assessment of what will happen if Congress blocks Malay's plans? Yes, because, you know, the, as I said, investors are betting on this IMF program, these this very needed dollars that will basically uh, be put in uh, Argentina's reserves to, in a way, make sure that the peso does not depreciate further. So it is basically life-threatening in the sense that if this doesn't come, this money doesn't come, investors will leave that, will draw the reserves, the few forex reserves, the dollars that Argentina still has, and the peso will really go nowhere. This will mean that inflation will double or triple. So I do, frankly speaking, agree as an economist with the fact that they, they can only go forward at this point. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the markets did initially react really well to Malay's election, but it seems that investors are getting a little bit more worried now about how feasible all of his plans are. What are the economists in your circle saying about his chances of really getting Argentina's huge economic problems under control? Well, I mean, let's start by saying that Millet, uh, Millet's uh, you know, starting point was somebody who we thought was an anarchist or somebody who didn't have, you know, a plan. So investors have been surprised positively. Let's not forget that because he does have a plan. And actually that plan has been welcomed by the IMF. I mean, the most conservative, you think, you know, rigorous uh, uh, economist that, that can go to a country and say, look, this is what you need to do. So for once, Millet's program seems credible, doesn't it? So the question is, is the population ready to accept? If you, if you listen to the comments you just showed, I, I understand people are, don't want to pay or, you know, the, the most important thing is that people need to see that it's not only workers pay, that is everybody paying in, equal, in, in, in an equal way. I think that is key to keep social stability. So Millet has to show, and, and the tax on exports is a way to do that, that, that also, you know, the most wealthy sectors of the uh, Argentine economy will pay a price. He needs to show that that everybody is paying, that is in equal in, in an equal form. And that might not be necessarily his ideology. So it's a bit tricky to get him there. But I think he needs to get there. He needs to and this is why his social, if you listen to him, biblical but social consequences is the right word 
for him to use because he needs to show he cares for these workers. And I think he's getting it. His, his wording is very different from the beginning. So I have at least a hope that he will succeed. Let me tell you why I think this is a hope for the world. Because, you know, in a way, there has to be alternatives for, for developing countries, for emerging countries. Meaning, as of now, you know, everything is the BRICS, the Global South, uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics, with Argentine characteristics, with Millet, and you just have to listen to him at Davos, he's proposing a different way. So for me, as an economist, I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but I think it's good to have options. He's put it up there, small country, in, you know, in, in, in the southern core, telling the world there's other options. Not industrial policy, not intervention, no tariffs, liberalism. So for me, he deserves that credit because it's very hard to do that. Argentina was part of the BRICS. He, can, he just had to go alone. He, he did not go alone. So it in itself is very powerful. That's a big challenge, isn't it? Keeping the investors happy, keeping the IMF happy and keeping people at home on board. Alicia Garcia Herrero, thank you so much.